Good evening, my little honeybees. It's February 4th, 2022, and that means it's Finished Object Friday. I'm glad you could join me in my yarn hollow this evening. I think I'm going to call you my honeybees from now on, unless someone has a major objection to being my honeybee. Tell me what you'd like to be called down in the comments below. Today is my first Finished Object Friday on YouTube, so... I've got quite a bit to show you today. In the future, I'm probably not going to have as many all at once, but that just gives me space and opportunity to live stream and have all of you show off your finished objects. I can't wait to meet you all live and catch up with those of you that I've already met in other crochet channels live streams. Before we jump into things, I am hoping to get two videos done tonight. Um, first is this one, and then the next one is a little bit more serious. It is um, going to be called Why I Wear Yellow and What Sunflowers Mean to Me. For those of you who are easily triggered by stories about uh, medical trauma, hospitals, big life changes, PTSD and the like, please feel free to protect yourselves. Skip that video. Watch one of the other wonderful crochet channels on YouTube and um, be safe with your mental health. I have a story that I need to tell and the people who are in the right mind state to hear that story, I am grateful to you, but do not feel pressured to listen to or watch anything that is going to cause a reaction that could ruin your day, your week, your month, your year. The too long didn't read version of that video is that I do have a serious medical condition um, for which I require chemotherapy and um, if I'm going to vlog about it in the future I will label those videos medical update so that you can always make the informed choice to watch or avoid them as you will and and that's also the reason that while I have jumped into this quite ambitiously, I am not going to nail myself down to a regular schedule just yet. I would be lying if I said I am 100%, 100% of the time. It's just not true. I need rest. I need mental breaks. And... I am the first person to tell other people in the community that it is perfectly fine to take breaks when you need them. So I'm going to hold myself to the same standard and take care of myself if and when I need to. It is with great pleasure and gratitude that I am able to say I am nearly to 50 subscribers and that is so incredibly exciting and it feels wonderful and it really does feel like I have just made 50 brand new friends and that's more friends than I've ever had in my life. So. Oh, I bet that's an attractive face on me. <laughs> I'm going to try not to do that again. Um, I am so, so grateful for every crochet channel that allows you to type CC in the chat to let their mods know that you're a content creator and that you need subscribers. And um, I am grateful to every creator who shouted me out on Instagram and we will talk more about thank yous in the end but the, the uh, 
the gist is that I am just blown away. I have only made two videos and I did not expect to have 12 subscribers. I have almost 50. What a blessing. There's some really cute pictures of my feline yarn guardian, Bernie, at the end of this video. And I want you to stay tuned all the way to the end so you can see him. He's a really handsome boy. If you're new here, please like and subscribe and leave a comment telling me if you have a yarn guardian and what their name is. I am a huge animal lover and it would make me so incredibly happy to know everything, just everything about your little yarn guardians. So please leave a comment down below. Since we're just getting to know each other, I thought I would drop some footage of my uh, crochet notebook where I write my project ideas and ideas for this YouTube channel and I plan colors and um, write notes about hooks and yarn and um, so I'll probably put that somewhere around here. So very quickly you see my coffee and cursey word sticker and some generic knitting stickers that I got from a book that was supposed to be knitting and crochet stickers, but it was mostly knitting. There's some sunflowers here. There are some yarn related stickers here. I have a Black Lives Matter sticker here. Um, this artist who did the Black Lives Matter and this retro sort of computer look, that's Thuman. Uh, she is quite talented and wonderful and everybody should go uh, follow Thuman. That is T-H-U-M-I-N-O-O -O on Instagram. She is wonderful. She also has a YouTube channel and I love the way she draws um, little black girls and she's got wonderful black girl magic going for her and you should absolutely go check her out. Um, we've got my I like big skeins and I cannot lie sticker, yarnaholic, there's one there that says I don't need a license to carry my nine millimeter, there's another one that says questions asked while counting stitches will be answered with louder counting and that was my crochet notebook. After that, I have some uh, brief footage of the uh, my my collection of uh, yarn buddies. I have one that's kind of long and lanky and weird, and he's got a little gremlin-looking face, and I call him Mr. Midnight after the cat character in the PC game Fran Ball. And this little cutie is Gigi from Kiki's Delivery Service. And if you're curious what's behind my head there, I actually took some footage of the yarn that I keep to spruce that wall up behind me while I'm filming. I don't normally sleep on the yarn. Sometimes I sleep on the yarn. I'm not gonna lie. This is my bed, it's my office, it's, it's my filming space. So sometimes the yarn is a project and sometimes it's part of my bed. I, I really don't think anybody should be coming for me and my yarn bed. I love my yarn bed. I am a yarn fairy. It is cozy and soft and keeps me warm and comforted. So, maybe you should try sleeping in your yarn. Maybe it will make you happier. Never know. Just saying. 
All right, honeybees, I am just about ready to start showing you some finished objects. So if you're ready, that's great. If you're not, go ahead and pause the video, grab yourself a drink and a snack or your hook and your project and settle in. And I will show you what I have finished in the past year. First, I wanna show you this beautiful Santa hat that I made according to a video I followed from Mel at Hooked to the Left and it is ridiculously warm. It is ridiculously soft and comfortable. It is a little big for my head but I got so many compliments during the holiday season that I think what I'm going to do is buy a nice holiday pin and pin it and then strategically sew some points so this massive hat brim stays up and um, then it sits on the head quite nicely. It's just a matter of getting this brim to stay up because it is it is a bit heavy so I made the pom-pom with a clover pom-pom maker because Ginger and Mel have taught me and I learned my lessons well and so they say get the clover pom-pom maker I got the clover pom-pom maker and I <laughs> Honey, I don't even like making pom-poms. It was so much fun. <laughs> Next up, we have a couple of hats that I made following um, Crystal at Bag o Day Crochet's thermal stitch beanie hat, which she had called the Another One Bites the Dust beanie. And so it is thermal stitch and it is cozy, squishy, warm, amazing. I love wearing it. So I actually, I made two. This is the other one and it actually looks better and looks better on me, but I still haven't <laughs> sewn the ends in on this one. So it looks a bit hairy. I'll put that one in my pile for Saturday. And I know, I know, it makes no sense. Some things with ends got shown on Work in Progress Wednesday. Some things with ends out are being shown on Finished Object Friday. There is no method to my madness there. I... Anyway. Next up are these Baby Brights scarves that I took some footage of on my camera and I will intersperse it through the time of me talking so you don't have to stare at my face the entire time. Not that that's a problem for any of you. You can spice it up, show some yarn porn while we're here, but I'll show you this one is Brick Stitch and it is um, Karen Simply Soft in the color baby brights and i just love the way it kind of looks like you took the colors and ran water over them or used water color to paint it to begin with that's one of my favorite things about the Simply Soft paints in this particular colorway. I just adore that it almost even looks like planned pooling, even though I um, didn't intend for that at all. And you'll see what I mean even more intensely in the one that's just single crochet, because that one, I couldn't believe my eyes when I, I saw the pattern emerging in front of me. So that's the first one I made out of um, Simply Soft paints and Baby Brights. And 
This is the second one. And you see it's kind of like you took a planned pooling project and then threw some water on it and let the colors run before it was totally dry. And I just love that. I think it's so gorgeous. And I would absolutely buy more of this particular yarn again and crochet all the things with it. I get so many compliments on things I make with this particular color. And I, I do love it for scarves. I have made three scarves out of it and I have gifted one of them. And this one is actually my mother's. She let me borrow it so that I could film it today. This is my drawstring bag that I made from it was a regular mandala from Lion Brand, and it was the color Chimera. I held the inside center pull and the outside end together and got this twisted, um, tweedy look, and I was just in love with it, especially since the brown and orange was just enough to do the bottom. And then it started shifting into this um, lighter brown and the gold. I made the cord for this. Oh, this is Anya from Ophelia Talks. Uh, she has a drawstring bag that is bean stitch. And that is what this is. I just carried it up a bit taller because I knew I wanted to put hooks in here. And then because um, it's crochet and it, the holes are quite big and hooks will slip through, I actually have them in a little sock inside, which I will eventually sew in and make into a true liner. But right now it's just a sock inside a drawstring bag with a lot of hooks in it. Um, yes. So yes, that's my, my drawstring bag with my ebony furls in it. I do have a full set and I was never going to do that with furls hooks. I was just going to buy singletons of the colors I liked and then they announced that they were either retiring or parting ways with their um the person who was carving the hook heads on the resin and wooden hooks and they are um they have already changed the design on the side of the hook that tells you what size the hook is and I happened to like the cute little curly Q border was around all the letter sizes. And they did away with that for a more modern look. Which was their decision, but I rushed to snap up every single size hook I could find in the old design. And the only one... I did not get before it was too late was the G hook hey what's up guys it is 5 a.m. and I am still editing this video because I chose to film late and uh, that is a form of self-sabotage so all this to say I did not specify that I was specifically collecting the ebony streamlined wood hooks. I was not just grabbing any furls, it was the ebony ones, and I only missed out on the G hook. Um, I did order one from furls just to have a complete set, but it is the one with the, the modern design and um, presumably the new hook head carver did carve it.
this beautiful, wonderful piece is a secret yarnery pattern. It is granny clusters in the round. And this is, oh, I had it backwards, excuse me. Not that you guys could tell, but I could tell. And that bothers me. So there we go. This is a Lion Brand Mandala um, Mill End. I got it on the Lion Brand site one of the very first times I shopped on their site and I should have gotten more because the mill ends for mandalas are about the same diameter but they're taller so you get a whole lot more yarn than you would in a regular mandala and um, sometimes it's just inconsistently dyed or it they skipped a color and um, this is like one of the colors but none of the white came out or they they skipped the white by accident I use this blanket a lot over my lap when I go out in my wheelchair. Um, it's not super practical for my wheelchair because it did get a bit ruffly towards the ends. Um, I lost patience and stopped counting where I was supposed to be increasing properly and just sort of fudged it. I said, oh, that, that looks right. That, that looks about flat. It's not dishing out too much. And so it would make a beautiful skirt, but it gets caught in the wheels of my wheelchair. And so I'm constantly tucking its extra folds around my hips. And it's the, I'm a mess. It's not a mess. It's a beautiful blanket, but I'm a mess. I also did not crochet it to be a wheelchair blanket. I was able-bodied and um, whole when I crocheted that, and it was just a fun project for me at the time. And um, then I required something to keep my legs warm, in well, my leg warm in the wheelchair. So I started using that. And since then, I have crocheted another blanket, but I don't know where it is right now. I think maybe it's in a closet or a drawer. Um, that one is specifically for pride. So it's got rainbow colors and gray, and I called it um, rainbow after the rain. And um, I will show that off at a different date. But in the meantime, this one is a blanket that I called Irises for Rosebud. Rosebud is my mother's nickname given to her by another one of our family members. And this is made of mandala ombre in the colors chi and zen and it is harlequin stitch and i did take some footage of that on my cell phone as well which i will be placing somewhere over the um over my my talking and trying to fold at the same time, perhaps. And um, so I'll show you this side that is busier and I don't like it quite as much as the other side. Um, 
because you could see the self striping so much more than I wanted it to show. Um, but then when I embraced it and just made the stripes bigger on the other side, I did like it quite a bit better. And it, the, the randomness of it going from thin to thick stripes is, um, I think it's charming and adds to the homemade look of it. But, um, if I were to redo this blanket again, I would give more love and attention to the corners because they are hard to find and it is hard to fold this into a nice rectangle or square of any kind. It is just kind of huge and there. The ridged border on the irises of the rosebud blanket was created by doing um, front post and back post, front post and back post, back post. I had to take it and mix it to my family and it, it just looks fine here. I've got this incredibly bright light shining in my face and I've got bright lights overhead and I still look like a raccoon or abandoned or sleep deprived which I admit I kind of am but I'm also just incredibly ill and I refuse to wear makeup so um and that, that is, um, for me, just like, I'm not going to hide how incredibly sick and tired I am. I don't think I should be forced to. I am in an incredibly ill <laughs> person. And so, you know, I'm going to look tired when I'm tired and... I'm tired almost all the time and uh, that's my reality so without my without further ado the last finished object I'm going to show you tonight this blanket is incredibly special to me I started crocheting it in 2018 I was inspired by a Japanese language song by Korean girl group twice called Candy Pop. It is one of my favorite songs ever. It makes me happy and I love the video. The video is a visual treat. Um, like I said, it's bouncy, it's fun, it's catchy, it's one of my favorite songs from one of my favorite Korean girl groups, and um, it's just, it's just fun, and I'm talking about this, this song from 2018, and it's because I didn't finish this blanket until I got out of the hospital in 2020. So this was the very first project I finished after being incredibly lonely. And I loved the idea of a world made entirely of candy and sweets. And it reminded me of playing the classic children's board game Candyland or watching um, the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The, the candy and sweets room in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory where all of the plants and the flowers and even the mushrooms are 
edible and they have sweets in them and there's like licorice hanging from the trees and giant gummy bears and I think that's all just so whimsical and fantasy and wonderful and why wouldn't you I think that that world would be extremely fun to visit and then you'd have cavities and you'd go home so I wanted to crochet a blanket that reminded me of those pastel twisted marshmallows that um, you can buy and um, it was really funny I was obsessing over the concept of these squishy beautiful pastel marshmallows and I didn't even have to look that hard in the yarn store before I found Lion Brand ice cream and I found the colorway Tutti Frutti and I could not believe my eyes. It was white. It was blue. It was yellow. It was pink. It was pastel. It was the exact colors I wanted. And if I held two strands together and made sure that the colors didn't align too much, I would get the exact twisting effect I wanted. So I was just in heaven when I realized that not only did Lion Brand make the perfect yarn for this project, they sold it in a bonus bundle that they were calling Ice Cream Big Scoop. Lion Brand, oh my gosh, love you. Love whoever names your brands and the colorways and it is such a pleasure to pick up a a a ball or a cake of a lion brand product and turn it over and see a fun name and have a good giggle with rap star all of the names are female rappers and um, Mandela Baby is all fantasy locations like Narnia and Honey Dukes. I think there's one called Hundred Acre Wood. Is there one called Neverland? I think there might be one called Neverland. They're, the names are so cute. I am rambling and <laughs> I am supposed to be showing finished objects. So the, the, my point is Lion Brand made the perfect yarn. They put it in huge skeins. So I just went hog wild and I bought like eight of them. And I started doing a massive blanket of double crochet. And I worked on it. And I worked on it. And I got to the point where even though I was still excited to look at it, and see my big squishy marshmallow blanket taking form it was all the same stitch and I was just a little bored with the mindless monotony of it so I put it aside for a while then something major happened to me for the reason I stated earlier I am going to keep the details of that major life event separate from this video because I don't want anybody to feel that they can't watch a finished object Friday or any of my regular videos so um, suffice to say something major in my life happened and I ended up in the hospital and nursing homes for an extended period of time and during that time I became known as the crochet lady I had gigantic bags full of different yarns and anyway I became the crochet lady in my hospital and in the nursing homes and my giant bags of yarn came with me wherever I went so um, 
I worked on this blanket when I was in the darkest points of my life and when I couldn't have anyone visit me anyway to celebrate the fact that it did get me through that rough spot um, that I'm out of the hospital now and that I don't have to do inpatient chemotherapy anymore I'm going to finally show you um, the candy pop blanket and somewhere in here I am going to include a little snippet of me singing candy pop for any people who actually speak Japanese I am very sorry I do not speak Japanese I used a lyrics video and I tried to follow the romanization and what I was hearing very carefully if I mispronounce something my apologies it is my fervent hope to learn Japanese sometime in the near future because I think it's a beautiful language and I would love to actually be able to understand um, that's important to me so this is the candy pop blanket Hoshi, hoshi, ay, ay, ay. Sweet Akashiro yellow, Aroiro wa go sign. Be my candy, candy pop, pop, kimi no. Honey, honey, na a microwave. Toki meki zen zen, kokusenai. Ima suguni, scream. Candy, candy, pop, pop, kimi ga. Lucky, lucky days, kureru kara. Kono mama de isasete. Kimi wa candy pop. Ooh, now, now, now. You're my candy pop. Ooh, now, now, now. You're my candy pop. It is big, it is incredibly squishy and soft, it has my marshmallow twists, and it's one of the most inspired and meaningful projects I've ever crocheted for myself. Every part of this blanket has come from a place of joy for myself, of clawing out of a really dark place, mostly by myself, and learning to be a better person. Let me show you um, I love this border. This border is one of my favorite parts of the blanket. It has half double crochet, double crochet, and then these here are the delicate berry stitch from Creative Grandma, and it is a modification of the traditional berry stitch and I thought it looked like button candy so my blanket has button candy and marshmallow twists and then I used um, the lemon meringue ice cream yarn for 
the section around the berries. So it's like lemon heads or another pale candy. Ironically, as much as I love this blanket, I do not actually use it just yet. Um, it has never been laundered from when I was working on it in the hospital. I know a fantastic woman named Michelle who handles laundry service and um, dry cleaning for me. And she, she handles all of my crochet and she's a crocheter herself. So she knows exactly how to care for crochet objects. And um, even though I, I know someone who can t take care of it for me, I just keep forgetting to send it with my bundles of finished objects to get cleaned. So that is completely my bad. And I need to send it with the next one. I definitely intend to because I would like to use this blanket before um, the cold season ends and it'll probably be the end of September or October before I can pull it out again and see its bright happy colors and cuddle with it. The candy pop blanket is entirely comprised of double crochet stitches for the body. Then it is one round of half double crochet, one round of double crochet, two rounds of Creative Grandma's Delicate Berry Stitch, and two rounds of double crochet for the border. The link to Creative Grandma's Delicate Berry Stitch tutorial is in the description below. I found this image of Twice using the Twice Amino, and um, it's my fervent hope that it was for use, but because the profile was in Korean, I am not absolutely 100% certain. The username translates to I like Mina. I will pop up the credit here, and if they are not, I'm going to make myself extremely available for contact so that they can just let me know and I'll be happy to remove it from my video and replace it with something else. But I thought it was adorable and I wanted to use it, so um, it's, my, it's my hope that they don't mind. I have also included a link to the page where I found it in the description below. For the Santa hat I made, I used Hometown USA by Lion Brand in the colors Tampa Spice and New York. The Raspberry Thermal Stitch hat was made using Crystal from Bag o Day Crochets, another One Bites the Dust hat tutorial, and was made using a Karen Cloud Cake in the color Raspberry. The drawstring bag I made for my ebony hooks was made using Anya from Ophelia Talks drawstring bag tutorial. And the scarves I made using Karen Simply Soft paints in the colorway Baby Brights were single crochet and um, brick stitch respectively. Have a wonderful yarn guardian here. His name is Bernie. He is five years old and he is a 25 pound tabby. He is the light of my life. He comes and greets me every morning and um, at some point I will upload some footage of me feeding him his favorite treat because he is just adorable and, uh, and I love him very much. We have reached the end of the video. I want to thank you if you've watched the entire thing. You mean the world to me. And um, there are just a few people that I would like to thank personally and give um, a shout out. 
because they are content creators who inspire me and encouraged me and made me feel like this was something I could do. That means a lot to me. I, once again, uh, am going to say that I have struggled with confidence all my life. It has never been my strong point. Looking into this camera and talking to you is terrifying. It's exhilarating. But it's also very scary. And so, um, with that said, I just want to thank from the bottom of my heart, honey, my tea, queen bee, granny bee. I love you so much. You are one of the first people I noticed in all of the different yarn tube chat rooms, talking to everybody and encouraging them. And it feels like you just know everybody. You're such a social butterfly. And, um, you're kind of my hero. <laughs> um, so Granny D is at, uh, Knit Pearl and Squirrel with Granny D Thompson is her channel. And you should definitely go check her out if you are not already subscribed to her. And I can't imagine how you found me if you're not subscribed to, to Granny D. But weird things happen. We forgive you. Go subscribe to Granny D. Ginger at Yarn Geek. Mel at Hooked to the Left. Julie at Whippy Chick Crochet. Kim at Affordably Crafty. Kim, I adore you. You are so funny. And you are such a boot to the pants. <laughs> like... I don't know anyone with a more come on and do it attitude than you and it has been great because I am a him and haw and maybe I'll do it next Tuesday person. <laughs> it's almost like you won't tolerate that. <laughs> Dana at Creatively Created Crochet. I am just so happy to have you as my friend. Kelly's Crochet Adventures. Um, Kelly is so sweet and she sings to her viewers as they come in and she makes them feel so good and welcome and she has a kind and encouraging word for every soul that needs to be filled with happiness and warmth. I can't imagine them leaving Kelly's not feeling 100% better. And that's very special. David at Bearded Yarn Dudes. Love you, David. You are amazing and so sweet. And I cannot wait to show off the Entrelock shawl that I won on your yarn anniversary. Amy Catdo and um, all the other creators who let you drop your channel link and um they they really just push you to their other subscribers and make sure that you are making your milestones so that you get what you want out of your youtube content creating experience yarn fairy nana donna cammy vj lacy jamie Tina, Ursula, I love you. You are so amazing. And if I have forgotten you in this video, please don't be offended. The crochet community is enormous and I'm trying to remember everyone who's been so kind and sweet to me and supportive because every single person who has said something like, go ahead and do it, you should do it was a drop in the bucket towards me actually taking this step. I'd love to thank Emily D. Baker. I'm not going to do a whole spiel about her again. She's great if you want to listen for legal commentary and pop culture news 
and so I will leave it there and say Emily and the mod squad I love you you have been amazing mentors confidence builders friends my life has changed since finding Emily's channel and becoming a law nerd I love the law nerd community you guys are literally neck and neck with the crochet community for just the best absolutely the best and most supportive people I know so um thank you for stopping by my yarn hollow and letting me share my finished objects with you it's been a genuine pleasure please join me again in my yarn hollow very soon um i hope you have a good day or night or morning whatever time you are watching me and um if you don't mind hearing about illness and medical stuff i really hope you will join me for my next video about why I wear yellow and what sunflowers mean to me because it is incredibly personal it's something I care about deeply and want people to know and understand so um, yes please do watch that if you can and if you can't I understand and I still adore you and you, I would rather you protect your mental health than watch one of my videos if it's truly going to hurt or disturb you. And I'm just so grateful and blessed to have each and every one of you in my life.